is, you know, let's say you were going to make 200K and it's way more than you need to live. Um, and the thing to point there is uh, in the higher offer, that's just cash um, um, option, the, there's no capital gains efficiency on just your equity being worth uh, a dollar amount at one of the liquidity events. And then the other difference is if you were to invest some of the higher salary cash into the stock market, you're doing it after the money's been taxed. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to chat about uh, the topic today. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Fahad Zaidi. I currently work at NEO as an engineering manager, specifically for our data analytics team. NEO is a fast growing startup in Calgary. It's one of the only unicorns ever to come out of Calgary. We are taking like a first principles approach to rethinking how Canadian uh, consumers interact with banking experiences through digital technology. Um, so, you know, not just uh, creating the same thing that you would get a bank in a, in a phone uh, or, in, or in an app, uh, but really rethinking what the best way is for someone to interact um, from a financial pers perspective with, you know, day to day experiences. Uh, but yeah, really excited to chat, chat with you today and see um, how I can help. Yeah, of course. Um, one of the, the first things I, I remember about about Neo was, I think it was a sign for it. It was like an ad board at a, at a bus stop somewhere here in Vancouver. And it said like, ditch your parents bank or something like that. And I thought that was really funny, but bringing the focus back to, to about what you wanted to talk about here. And I think we've, we've spoken about that on the part before is the idea of equity, um, and, and your salary, right? It's, it's relevant to a lot of people because we're graduating now we're looking at job offers and honestly, we're, we're relying on people who've done this before to tell us if that's a good offer or not, how should we negotiate and all those things. Um, but equity is something that not a lot of people still fully understand. Um, so maybe today we can spend some time talking about what that really means. And, and also some things that I think you that'd be really valuable for the people to hear. So maybe to kick things off, let me ask you this. Why do companies offer equity in the first place? Uh, yeah, great question. So um, e equity is an instrument companies use essentially to, you know, incentivize performance that's aligned to longer term goals. Um, and the way companies do that is by giving you a seat at the table. So typically equity or options or, you know, however uh, a company describes it, it's uh, it's a set of reserved shares that are only allowed to investors and employees. Um, and so what happens is, um, you know, management teams will use this as a tool to, to just motivate people um, to get them to work towards the same, you know, longer term or midterm goals that the business has in mind as well. You know, I've had jobs where I've created tools from scratch. Uh, a bunch of companies have used that tools. I've seen the company I work for, their revenues go up, but I get nothing because I just get my salary. I get some job security because I'm dependable. Um, maybe I get a, a bump or something on my salary and then that's it. Um, whereas at, you know, my previous startup that I worked for or the startup that I'm with now, you know, I know my shares are going to be worth what they're worth as the company grows. And, and to me, that's really fulfilling and, really, and it really starts to then feel much more inclusive, tied to the outcomes and not just be able to work. I think, you know, up until now, we've we've seen a lot of great progress in making sure minorities, um, male or female, women specifically, uh, Aboriginal people, especially in Canada, um, have the opportunities that other people have. Um, but I think it's time to, to also make sure that their outcomes are also tied to um, overall business goals as, as well. And equity is just one thing that um, allows for your personal outcomes to be tied to the company's outcome as well. What you said is really powerful and I, and I completely agree. But something that I think people also don't understand is when does equity actually belong to you? Definitely. So great, great question. Um, and so, you know, I want to kind of tip my hat to the pioneers of this model, which is, you know, companies that have done this in Silicon Valley really well. And then that has turned into a place called Y Combinator that kind of teaches early stage founders on, you know, what they can do uh, to implement like an equity incentive plan. And every company does it slightly different but they use this overarching approach that I'm going to share, which is essentially a four-year vest with a one-year cliff. Um, this is a term that, you know, I would say came out of Silicon Valley, um, but companies across America, across Canada, um, across Europe, you know, they, they play within this model. Um, and what that means is the one-year cliff is essentially, to keep the math very simple, let's say you're given $10,000 worth of equity, um, on, you know, as a new grad. Um, you know, the one year cliff is, you know, none of it is yours if you leave within the first year. So, so you got to be there for one year and at your one year, 25% of it's going to vest. So after 12 months, you own 25% of your 10,000. 
And then what happens is the rest of it will, will vest over the remaining 40 years. But, and this is dependent on company. Um, you know, at Neo, for example, it vests every month. So, you know, you get your 25% at the 12 month. And then, you know, let's say you leave after 16 months or 18 months or 23 months, um, you have 23 months worth of equity. Once you're there for 23 months, you have 13 months worth of equity um, if you're there for 13 months. Um, so that's uh, when the equity actually belongs to you. It's typically, you know, just to make sure uh, people stick around for a meaningful amount of time, it's, it's a one year cliff and then it's all yours uh, once you assuming you've been there for four years. Sorry, and is there a restriction on like when, when it belongs to me, what can I do with it? Um, if I just wanted to sell it, if I wanted to like keep it, what, what does that look like? Yeah, great question. Um, so there's, uh, for private companies, uh, it only turns into cash when there's liquidity events. Um, and again, there's three kinds of liquidity events I've seen. And so the first one is if the company goes public, uh, the equity, all of your equ equity that's vested, it belongs to you the day the company goes public and it's worth it's worth what it's worth that day. And then from there, they're your shares. So you can do whatever you want with them. You can sell them, you can keep them, you can sell a portion of them, that, you know, a high percentage of them, a low percentage of them, you can do whatever you want. The other uh, scenario is if the company gets bought. Um, so depending on how much the company gets bought for, your shares are what they're worth at that time. Um, if they're bought by a public company, again, your shares are public that day. If they're bought by a private company, typically there's some discussions around if you want that as cash, if you want to keep your equity, if you want to convert it and stuff like that. The third liquidity event, and this is something Neo offers that I think is quite unique, um, pioneered by some of the other players that came before us, but but it's still something recent, um, is when we do a secondary um, uh, sell. Uh, and so, for example, if a company is worth, let's say, a million dollars at Series A, and you were given a bunch of equity, if the company is now going to be worth $2 million at Series B, which would never happen, it would be much more than that, I hope. <laughs> um, um, but your the, the shares you were given or the equity that you were given at Series A are now worth double, and you can trade them with the Series B investor for cash. Just building on that, and you touched on this already, and I think it's, it's an important question to ask. Um, let's compare a salary where you're getting a higher base and just that. So like someone's paying, agreeing to pay you like 200K a year. Okay. And let's put another offer on the table where maybe you're getting paid. Like I might be messing the numbers because I don't know too much, but maybe you're getting paid like less than that, but you get this added equity piece. Um, as a candidate, if it were you, how are you evaluating this, these two options? And ultimately, what are you picking? Um, so I think the, the thing to really pinpoint there is, you know, let's say you were going to make 200K and it's way more than you need to live. Um, and we get this question a lot of like, well, isn't that just the same thing as equity? Because and then you could just invest some of that cash that's left over into the stock market or cryptocurrency or houses or something like that. Isn't that kind of the same thing as having equity in just your company? Um, and the thing to point there is uh, in the higher offer, that's just cash. Um, um, option the there's no capital gains efficiency on just your equity being worth uh, a dollar amount at one of the liquidity events and then the other difference is if you were to invest some of the higher salary cash into the stock market you're doing it after the money's been taxed whereas with an equity offer your money is invested into your own company into your own work you're betting on yourself and, and what you believe in um, pre-tax uh, and then on top of that, when you have a liquidity event in Canada, at least capital gains tax is a lot lower than income tax. So, so there's a huge efficiency there as well. Um, so your cash, your cash, you know, however you model it, cash ends up being worth a lot more if it's invested before it touches your hands into your company. And then because it's capital gains and it's not income, like income tax gets taxed, um, you come out at the other side with, with a lot more money. Look, um, you're, you're working for a company that I think so far, at least publicly is known that Neo's raised like 299 million so far um, in Canadian dollars. It's it's a unicorn, which means it's worth about a billion. Um, and I'm going to say that despite have your experience that you have, I think you would have had some sense of security knowing that I'm getting equity in a company that's doing so well and has raised so much money and it has value. Now, if someone's listening to this and they're like a candidate just evaluating offers from a bunch of startups or big companies and they might or might not know how to evaluate these companies how should they evaluate that this company that they're going to work for will actually end up hitting some targets that they're expecting to and we'll get to the stage where their stock will be worth a lot at least yeah great question uh so for myself um things that i look for 
is um, the founder's track record, I think is really important. So, you know, how have they done so far? You know, what were the founders up to before they started this company? So, you know, at NEO, a lot of our founders come from another successful startup that did really well in Canada. Um, so I trust that pedigree. You know, some of the learnings that every early stage founder has, you know, those are getting applied at NEO versus learning them for the first time. Uh, and then I would say culture. Um, and, you know, what I mean by culture is not just beanbag chairs and fridges full of, uh, you know, bubbly and stuff like that. You know, that's not culture. Um, culture to me is, you know, do they, you know, what kind of people do they, do they hire? Do they hire go-getters? Do they value somebody that doesn't just do what they're asked to do, but goes above and beyond in terms of some of the peripheral stuff that, or auxiliary stuff that goes into it, uh, which is very prevalent in tech jobs. You know, there, there's really no job in data where all you do is write SQL. It'll be SQL, maybe a little bit of infrastructure related work or understanding, maybe a little bit of um, understanding automation, maybe a little bit of understanding business. And then lastly, um, you know, I, I think of everything as a product. So I would look at, if, if we think of culture as a product, I would try to look at a company's NPS, so net promoter, net promoter score within culture. So are other people who work at Neo or, or other company, are they recommending it to their friends? Are they recommending it to their peers? Because you wouldn't do that if you didn't really enjoy whatever it was all about. So like if, you know, I'm a member of a gym, I really enjoy it. So I always talk about it with my friends. So like I'm an example of high NPS for that, you know, gym product. Um, I look for those things um, in a company's culture as well. Like how how are people that are a part of it promoting it to other people and what, what are some of the, thing, the things that they're saying? I think those would be important things to look into as you're evaluating offers. Um, one more thing I want to add there is um, this is, I think, very specific for early stage uh, career people. Um, I, I would try to look at how accelerated is your growth going to be in that role. So if it's your first or second job, when you eventually interview for your next job, um, how is this current role that you're evaluating going to help you? If it's a small team, a small company, um, or if it's uh, you know, where you're going to get a lot of exposure to different things, you know, that might be more impressive than you worked at a bigger company or a bigger team and, and just did one thing over and over again. Um, you know, and in our world, it's not so much years of experience, it's what you can do uh, and your, and your you know, ab ability to deliver. So um, I would try to think of it as that lens is, is not even look at salary and equity, you know, com and, and just use that as a measuring stick. Obviously, that's important. I think right now the job market in tech is quite hot. Um, but I would look at like, you know, position A or position B, you know, three years from now or five years from now when you're interviewing again, whether it's internal or external, which one of those two jobs is going to be more impressive um, than the other. Uh, and not just impressive in terms of title and the name of the company, but impressive in, in terms of what you'll be able to say you got done, um, I think is really important. This is something you brought up and I'm, I'm really glad you did early on, which is there are still, there's people out there, there's hiring freezes, there's layoffs, and there's people losing jobs. And what do you recommend, like with your years of experience, what do you recommend to people who are like looking to establish some kind of job security right now? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, every market has ups and downs. Um, every industry has ups and downs. So it's always going to happen. I think we, um, especially people our age that have just seen ups in tech, our, our, it's, it might be our first time or maybe our second time at most seeing um, offers getting taken back or uh, cuts that affect them and layoffs that affect them. And one way to, again, you know, thinking of your own work as a product, um, one way to create a moat around yourself is to always focus on having really core skills as opposed to some of the shiny skills that are kind of around that core skill. So in data analytics specifically, the core skill is SQL. Um, you know, the core skill isn't some fancy tool that came out two weeks ago that's really shiny and it's growing and, you know, some company uh, wants to invest in it because they have extra cash and, and they'll kind of play around with the new tooling. Uh, the core skill is SQL. Now, if you know SQL, it doesn't really matter if you're using DBT or some other editor or, or, or some other ID. If you're using SQL, you're, you're, a, you're somebody that the company will always need because there's always going to there's always going to be data problems that a company has to solve and how they solve them at the very basic level will be through SQL. But Fahad, we've talked about a lot of important things today um, and I'm, I'm sure people will take a lot of value from it. But if there's one thing you could leave this interview with or this, this episode with, um, it could be about equity, it could be about jobs, it could be about anything. What, is, what would that be and, and why? Um, I would say equity isn't just for really high risk tolerant people anymore. 
Um, so at NEO specifically, we don't just give everybody one offer where we say the salary and maybe there's some room for negotiation and then how much equity you're getting. We actually give every single candidate multiple offers um, with the same amount of total compensation, but different scenarios of salary versus equity. Um, and the reason we do this is to be more inclusive towards everybody because, um, you know, life is life and not everybody's super high risk tolerant, but that doesn't diminish their talent and their ability to add value and be a great team player um, as we bring them in. So I would encourage anybody listening that might think that equity is just for people that are young and, you know, super high risk takers or something like that. It's for everybody. Um, you know, and, and again, something unique at NEO is we, we also allow individuals to change those scenarios um, as they mature in their career. So you can come in year one, maybe in a medium scenario where you have, uh, you know, a, a good amount of salary and a good amount of equity. But then let's say you really believe in the product's direction and you want to go low salary, high equity, you can do that at your one year mark. And then let's say you're, you continue to have fun at NEO um, and you're really growing and developing, but now you have other obligations outside of work. Well, in year three, you can go into high salary, low equity, low, low equity and, and vice versa. Um, so, you know, we've come up with ways to, to just be more inclusive to everybody because um, it's not, this isn't just something just for people that are high risk. Father, I really appreciate you like coming on here and, and talking about this stuff. Um, I think I thought I knew the bare bones, but I, I knew even more today. And that's always a good sign. I think that, that, that was the purpose of this podcast anyway. Um, I'm going to put a link down to your LinkedIn um, on the, in the description of this video. So I'll, I'll let people reach out to you if they have any questions. And, and hopefully people will now know more about equity and all those things. And um, yeah, thanks, thanks for being on the pod. Thanks so much, sir. We'll, we'll chat soon.